Places from the drone is completely different. <laughs> it's awesome. Alright, folks. So today has really gone as I planned it exactly. Um, you are now joining me at 10pm and driving around in the dark, trying to uh, find some way to sleep. It's all good, it's how it goes sometimes, ain't it? Not the end of the world though, because there is something I want to show you up here. I was going to show you that today, so we can still do that. Yeah, let's go find a spot and go from there. I do love my camera in the night. And this bit will be coming in a moment. Land Rover as well, I think. Oh, 
my god! <laughs> oh god. Is that that spot? Yeah. Don't stay there. Oh, there's cars parked down here anyway. Jesus Christ. God damn it, I'm gonna have to go back to the other spot. Oh, I just came back to the same spot as there last night. At least I can park here. <laughs> so, while the engine's still running, I'm gonna show you this quick. For those long-term viewers, you'll already know this, but for those that have just started watching, I'll have to explain this in a bit more detail. Cut a long story short, I had driven up a mountain in Switzerland and my key decided to stop working or specifically the barrel decided to break. One thing led to another and the only way I could get it working was essentially hot wiring my own van. Um, still need the key for the immobiliser and for the steering lock but I bypassed the whole ignition barrel to get myself back and my key was some bits of wire with a plug for a little while <laughs> to get back to England anyway. Um, so yeah, every time I wanted to start up I had to touch wires together and that. So that's how this thing was born. So I started off originally by just buying like racing track day starting panel for like track cars, which is like an ignition button, a start, and that kind of thing. So you don't need a key with them. But obviously I still wanted to have the key and everything. So I set it up in a way I ripped my whole loom apart and wired it up to that. And there's also a hidden switch, which obviously um, I'm never gonna show on camera because that would be stupid. But I wanted more, I sort of created this. Now this will bring out the uh, inner geek in all of you, I imagine. This is like my childhood air fighter fantasy thing going on here. <laughs> I'll just show you, it'll make more sense if I show you. So this right here is Mark II of the uh, overhead unit quite a bit, it's gone from just that to this whole thing and yes the uh, housing for it did used to be a tool box it was a drill actually I think it was but it works perfectly so up here we've got the um, the kill switch for the B2B so I can turn it on and off whenever I want to and that's the display for the B2B there see we're pretty charged at the minute so it's only putting eight amps in that's new as well so I'll have to talk about that at some point you've got the switch panel here with the big red start button that now glows that's uh, switch there does the lights we've got another set of switches to the side here which don't all do something at the moment but they will do I've got plans that one just does this little red light and also in the foot wells they're all on the same circuit and uh, they're brilliant because the reason I use the red light is because you can have it on while you're driving and it doesn't affect your eyes and then at the moment these two side switches here I've rigged up some lights outside the van so I have left and right control it's just good for uh, you know if you maneuvering and stuff you can see down the side of the van and then at the moment the other switches don't do anything but I've got some flashing lights to go on and some other bits and bobs so yeah there you go that's my completely overkill starting panel overhead console thing uh, to kill the engine that's it quickly or maybe not so quickly before I go because I've had this question so much over the time, I just want to show you. Um, so the last one to say this was Overlord1. He said, a couple of ideas. Number one, camera stabiliser. 
and I've had this um, I've had people say this so much it's mad so I'm going to show you what's actually involved uh, in doing that so this is the camera that I use at the minute okay I'm going to do this phone I'll show you so this setup sort of changes uh, all the time but this is what I'm using now this is what's working for me there you go look so that's what I'm filming on so that's an X-T20 on a little mini tripod thing that I can hold and there you go bit of camera reception so I do have a gimbal uh, I use it quite a bit for when I'm doing like the nice b-roll-y stuff let me show you what's actually involved in setting that thing up and using it. So you've seen how big that setup is, yeah? This right here is the gimbal. I'll grab my other camera to set it on, just so that you can see. It's basically the same camera, it just doesn't have the mic on it at the minute. So, you know, I've just whipped that camera out to film. Now, I'll just stress before anyone comments, why don't you leave it out? Uh, I live in a van, there's not a lot of space and you can't be leaving things around, especially things like cameras because they're going to fall over and smash so something like this definitely needs to go away when I'm not using it so bear in mind, this is the setup, so if I want to do what I'm doing now like record something, this is what I'd have to do we get the gimbal out, one piece, two piece, three piece, this one goes on the bottom. Alright. Put it in there. You lock it there. Alright. And we need the plate on the camera. I'm going to leave this real time so you can actually see what the crack is. We need the main plate. And now this is the faffy bit, so now you have to balance it, which I've not really got it on a flat surface, so that should be interesting. Lock it off, turn it on. And there we go. Now we can film. So what did that take? You know, five minutes. But also, look at it. I mean, this thing is amazing. This is a DJI Ronin. Is it an S? SC Ronin SC. Like it's a fantastic piece of kit. I can move it around like this. Uh, can hold the trigger and you know, make it do the normal ooh, gimbally stuff like that it's an absolutely amazing piece of kit but for like you know handy cam kind of stuff that I do which is the stuff that everyone complains is shaky it's just ridiculous it's not practical at all I mean look at it you want me to walk around with this thing yeah I just use this for the um, like the b-roll and the sort of arty stuff and then I can take my time with it. You know, it's a pre-thought out shot, all of that kind of thing, has its place. There are other options. I have, um, I mean, I've shot on all sorts of things. I do have the Osmo Action, which I use, which is a fantastic little camera. And that has inbuilt stabilization, which is amazing. However, the audio on it is so shit, it pisses me off. So I don't know about you lot but yeah I, I hate the audio on it with a passion I've tried to fix it 
um, but it's just crap. I like to use a proper microphone because it just sounds a lot better. So, so yeah, there you go. I do have stabilisation kit. I just choose not to use it. Another alternative, there are bodies like these, uh, mirrorless, so you can get the Sony system which has stabilisation built into the camera, which would obviously be a lot better, but I'd take photos with these as well and I love the pictures that these Fujis make so yeah I you know it is what it is basically so yeah there you go so I hope that clears up the whole gimbal stabilization thing that seems to be a hot topic all the time in my bloody video right I'm calling it a night log burners on uh, I'm gonna watch a few episodes of Lost and probably go to bed because it's half eleven so I'll see you all tomorrow